Welcome to Dreams Inspire Reality Podcast with Tara Darnley, a podcast for creatives looking to turn their dreams into reality with practical strategic steps from everyday people and entrepreneurs who are living their best lives possible. Hey, thank you guys for joining. My name is Tara Darnley, and I'm the co-founder of Dreams Inspire Reality and Darlin and Co. And I am your host today. And I am excited to talk to you guys about um, what I left off on my last episode. What I will talk about today, which is my trip to Amazon in Washington. So even though their headquarters is not in Washington. Um, mainly their department that deals with all the policy making and all those things. That's what's headquartered in um, Washington, D.C. And so my main brand, Darlene Co., was invited out to Washington, D.C. for Prime Day um, on both July 15th and 16th. I hope those were the correct dates. Um, But we were invited for Prime Day. And so we went out there and it was just an amazing time. And my, I'm just going to try and give you guys the 10 takeaway points that I had um, from the event and also just like going a little bit in depth on like, you know, my personal experience at the event. So I was um, invited, they did a blog post on my main company, uh, I think a year ago. And so they reached back out to us like, hey, we're having this um, event that we have annually and we would like to invite your brand out. Okay, sure. Um, I'm not going to say no to that. So all expenses were paid, um, covering everything. And I always like to look at when I go to these type of events and they're facilitated by these major brands, like the treatment that goes behind it. Like when we were invited uh, to the Steve Harvey show and all those things, I always look at the treatments um, that you get and the way these brands like just, you know, work, how they work, how their team works. I'm always studying those things. And so I was of course curious to see how one of the major Uh, the biggest e-commerce platform in the world, like how they're behind the scenes, you know, kind of getting a glimpse of it. I always want to see those things. And so I was not disappointed um, from the entire experience of, you know, just the booking and, you know, just seeing all those things, like, you know, the things that we small brands dream of, like, you know, one day you'll have like this huge staff. And I always think like, like Jeff only owns like a, a small percentage of the company, Jeff Bezos, which is the owner, um, well, the founder of Amazon, um, he just owns like a small percentage, yet he has this huge, humongous team behind him. And he probably knows, well, they, they corrected me on that, but I thought like, you know, he probably doesn't know all the aspects of what's going on. But when I did ask, he was like, oh yeah, he's very involved even to this day, like knowing what's going on. He still answers uh, customers' email. Um, that goes to his email address. And if it's like really important, he'll like be like, you know, what's going on with this? Why is this person having this problem? So he's very much um, involved. So I like to see those things. So, um, you know, just from the, you know, booking my flight, my hotel, um, you know, making sure like everything is covered from, you know, giving us um, each a personal eye. We all got like a credit card with a, it was loaded for our two days there just for food or whatever um, your time there. And just like little details like that, I look at because like I said, I've worked with other brands, um, but I think by far they impressed me the most with the type of treatment that I, that I got. 
um, from their entire staff. Hmm. Well, I think they they will be tied with, with eBay, but we'll talk about eBay on the next episode. But yes, so I went down there and we were basically meeting with policymakers to just share our experience um, on the platform, selling on the platform, how it's um, grown our brand, what it has done for our brand as a small business, and you know how we've been able to leverage Amazon for you know various things, whether it's distributed internationally. So for our brand, for example, we're selling in Australia, in UK, Canada, Mexico. Uh, we just launched in Dubai. And, you know, they're literally like you're just adding countries um, every minute. And so you're able to now, you know, eliminate a third party distributor. Um, so most of us, when we started, that's the only way we could launch internationally through a distributor that kind of made the job easier for us. But now with like platforms like Amazon and eBay, you can literally sell your product, you know, worldwide. And I'll talk about that more in the coming weeks um, because a lot of you guys have, re- have reached out to me about that and interested in expanding your brand um, internationally and globally. So I'll definitely touch on that and go in more a little bit later. So that was my story. Um, and I was able to share that with a lot of the policymakers. So we were able to just go around talking to all the policymakers and sharing my story. And specifically, I met with most of them that were um, over North Carolina since I'm in North Carolina and just talk to them and they were able to ask me questions. I was able to share my story. I was um, really able to just engage in them and like what changes they were making for small business, small businesses in North Carolina. Um, so just you just using the um, opportunity to also ask some questions, not just telling my stories like, hey, I heard you launch, launch this policy or this law was passed and it was supposed to help small businesses, but it's not. <laughs> like I haven't benefited from it. No one I know have benefited from it. When I inquire about it, you know, it's not for us. So just really engaging in those type of questions um, when I had, because I had this amazing opportunity um, the staff was fantastic. I got to meet other sellers who are doing incredible. Uh, we had most of the sellers, I would say, were authors. And uh, we had like different type of authors, whether it's romance, um, comic. Uh, it was just like, very, it was like a multitude of different sellers. And just to see how everyone was just using the platform and to just make a living and some of them exclusively sold on the platform so that was amazing to see i had i met one amazing person he was actually a doctor and he left his job and he now has these amazing comic um books and he's so well known that people are even getting his name his books tattooed on them and i'll also he'll be on the podcast too so Definitely want to share his story with you guys because I just thought it was so amazing um, for him to have that opportunity and leverage his talents uh, from something totally different that he went to school for. So I'll definitely have him on. But right now, I want to touch on the 10 things, uh, my 10 takeaways. And I share this in our Facebook group. So if you're not in our Facebook group, um, definitely join because I shared this there first. Um, And if you didn't download our app, Make sure you download it so you can stay up to date with all um, the content from us. So number one, network is your network, right? We always hear that, but like I always, I'm always looking at like how those quotes and those sayings, um, you know, really become reality and how we live them out. And so even though I'm an introvert, but I act, I act extroverted, um, I'm really an introvert at heart. Um, I really get nervous in small spaces with a lot of people, but I just have learned to maneuver those spaces and know that whenever I have opportunities like that, I can't shrink, right? Um, I have to just use that opportunity. And so I've, I've been able to somewhat learn how to navigate that. And especially being, being a minority woman, um, just a lot of things about me in particular when you see me i'm the minority i have locks Um, there's a lot of things that is not very common about me and so when i have these opportunities i make sure that i'm representing it in a great way and i'm standing out and i'm using the 
opportunities to the best of my ability. So this was like a, a, a really great um, opportunity where I was able to see what that really means, like your network, your network is your network. And so as soon as I, um, the first day that we arrived, later that evening, we had like a meet and greet. And the meet and greet was literally just being in a room filled with all the sellers. I think there there had to be over a hundred sellers. And of course, Amazon's employees. And the room kind of just was like, there was no formal meet and greet. You just walked in and people were were already mingling and talking and drinking and, you know, just like being adults. <laughs> and so you can like go in the room and shrink and be like, oh my gosh, I don't know who to talk to. I don't know what to do. You just had to fit in. <laughs> you just had to go and start, you know, find someone to talk to and just, you know, you know, make the best of the opportunity. And so once I saw that, I also, it really bring this term, it brought this term to life because I'm like, you know, stepping into a room like that, um, most of the sellers were making six, seven figures, eight figures on the platform. So if this is a type of network you want to be around, um, you know, you have to start talking to people and get to know them because you never know as well, like who is going to open the next door for you or who's the next connection for you. And really, when you look in business, sometimes it's all about who you know, whether we want to admit it or not, it's really about who you know. And so this was like a really eye opener for me, like like literally just being thrown into this pen, like uh, go fishing. Um into the sea rather, like go fishing, go, you know, go figure it out. And so that was like a, just like, whoa, um, let me figure this out real quick. Um, anxiety go away, um, nervousness go away, like, you know, figure it out kind of deal. So definitely when you are in, you know, spaces like that, just always try to remember that quote and, um, you know, think about like who may be in the room that's your next, like, opportunity that has the answer that you, you, know, you just never know. Um, you just really never know. Uh, number two, practice the art of networking, even if you are an introvert. Um, so that's where that came in. Cause like I said, I just like, I literally just looked around and I had instant anxiety and I was like, Oh my God, like, oh, what am I going to do? So instantly I just looked across the room I was like, okay, find a female <laughs> that's easier for me to engage with um, right away. So I found a table that had two females and I went over and introduced myself. We started talking. They were authors. So they had that in common. Um, we had just wrote a children's book for my kids. And so now I have something in common too. We're authors too. Hey, <laughs> so, you know, just start conversation, but then also make sure you're telling them what you really do. So then when, once I told them that, Hey, yeah, I have a children's brand, then one was like, Oh yeah, I write for children. That's great. And then, you know, the conversations develop and then I started, you know, just, you know, not be so nervous and I was able to walk the room a little bit more. Um, definitely the champagne helped. <laughs> <laughs> the champagne helped to calm my nerves, but also a tip uh, when you go to events like this, um, if you're not a drinker, which I'm not, just make sure you know you're limiting yourself to one glass or two or whatever you can um, handle so you're not like drunk and then you're like, oh my gosh, you're saying all the wrong things. Like you don't want to do that. You don't want to be sloppy. <laughs> you don't want to have a sloppy first meeting. So if you know you can't like handle liquor, or whatever, just stick to your water. Um, that's fine. Put some ice in it. No one will know. <laughs> so definitely think about things like that. But you have to practice the art of networking in business. Like it's so crucial. I can't tell you guys how crucial it is to know how to network and just like work a room. Um, it really is an art to it. I had a friend, I have a friend who uh, we've been to a few networking events and um, pitching competition as such. And I've seen her work the room. And when I first, I think she was the first female I saw that worked the room. And she worked the room for, she was working the room so good. She was working it for me and her. And I was so impressed because I was like, how do you do this? And she would just like go get whatever number she needed to get, get whatever contact she needed to get, 
because she knew like, you know, I have a goal in mind. I'm not just coming here to look cute. I'm not just coming here to just like laugh in everybody's face. Like I have a goal and at the end of the day, this goal is to further my brand. And um, that may sound a little bit sharkish or whatever you want to call it, but that really is the name of the game. And no matter what level you're on, you know, everybody needs something from someone. And so you just have to figure out how you're going to work the room um, in a pleasant way. You don't want to be aggressive. And the way she did it was definitely an art to it that I was super impressed with. Uh, number three, diversify your offerings and your mindset. <laughs> diversify your offerings and your mindset. So this is one of the things I learned. Um, <clears throat> I always talk about like diversifying your portfolios. Um, what do you sell? What are you offering? Like, what do you have going on? Like, how are you making money? Like, how is, you know, are you working for your money? Are you work, your money working for you? And so diversifying your offerings and your mindset, I was able to see that a lot because I looked at the, the guy that was a doctor, for example, he was a doctor and he was making a great living and he decided to diversify his offerings by just diving into something that came natural for him to the point where it became a multi-million dollar brand. And now he's able to say, you know what, I really didn't want to be a doctor. My parents wanted that for me or whatever. Um, or it's not as fulfilling as me just being a creative. And so now he's able to, you know, decide whether he wants to do that or go into, you know, stick to his job. Um, so definitely think about that. Most of the people I met, they were selling various products. Um, they didn't just like limit themselves to one product. They were selling various products. They had, they were on various channels. And so if something, if they had a slow season for one product, they had like a fallback, um, you know, fallback offering that they were able to still live off. And most of them had, you know, quit their jobs or, you know, they were able to sustain themselves with whatever offerings they had. And that also goes back to your mindset because it your mindset, of course, dictates everything. Because if you're just thinking, well, I'm just going to stick to this one thing, you know, because that's it. That's fine. Um, if that one thing is is making you all the money in the world that you want or all the, you know, the security that you want um, as you're living out your dream, then that's fine. But just be open to diversifying your offerings, whether is I'll give an example if you're selling beauty product and you're like well you know what um everybody is selling beauty product but what can make me a little bit different maybe I could add some accessories to it or maybe I can add an experience to it like you know how can I do that and I want to uh I always remember well, I do in this situation, I remember Nisha, um, who was on our Pick My Brain tour, and she has a brick and mortar store. And so what she gives, she talked about, you know, what makes her brick and mortar store sustainable and where customers keep coming back is she has, she gives them an experience, right? It's not just them coming to get a wax or whatever it is. It's like, it's just an entire experience of them coming back. So that's how she was able to diversify her offering. And then she also has like makeup, her own makeup line that she offers them. So I love that about her brand because she could have just said, well, I'm just going to do makeup, right? But no, she added the experience factor to it where customers are now going to come back to her every week or every month because she added that other aspect of her business. Um, she broadened her business basically. And so definitely keep that in mind once you're creating your products, um, you know, not to limit yourself, like don't ever say never, <laughs> um, basically. Number four, adapt tech changes. Um, as I'm at this event um, over the past few weeks, just looking at, you know, times are changing, man. And I think, and I'll talk about this, I'll definitely be talking about this, um, on my upcoming episodes, but the things that are happening in tech, I don't think small businesses are prepared for it. Um, most of us don't even know what's happening behind behind scenes. We're just like, we're just like, I think our update come from like social media, whether it's uh, Instagram, whatever your Instagram friends are, are posting or your Facebook friends. We're not like in tune with how tech is changing and evolving and the things that's about to take place 
and just even e-commerce business, how we're going to be able, how we should be operating on the level that consumers are going to start expecting. And so being able to adapt to those tech changes and being ready um, and not limiting ourselves again, going back to your mindset, like, well, I'm not going to do that because that's just not for me. Um, you know, just being, being ready to adopt, like, as simple as that. Like I've met so many older businesses and the ones that are extremely successful, they'll be quick to tell you like, I hate tech and I don't want to do it, but I had to figure it out. So I hired someone to figure it out or I'm taking some classes to help me because I'm not being left behind. And I think that applies to all of us. Like if you are you need to be ready for the changes that's going to come. And so being around Amazon and seeing the stuff that they're doing, um, the things that's on the horizon that's about to take place and how they're shifting and just how the platform is evolving for sellers and for customers, um, you know, their experience shopping like that, it's again going to force us to have to level up even on our own personal website. Because if you think about, the the kind of effect Amazon has, they've now conditioned customers to, uh, first of all, expect two day shipping, and now that changed to one day shipping, because <laughs> they just updated um, their Prime to one day, and one day is going to change to a couple of hours, and a couple of hours is going to change to a couple of minutes. So those are the changes that's going to come down the pipeline, and. Whether you hate it, you hate them, you hate the changes, it's just what consumers are going to be conditioned to. And it's what we're going to be conditioned to because we're consumers too. And so we're buying other products, we're buying other services too beyond what we sell. And we're going to be conditioned to those things. So if you're conditioned to those things, what do you expect other people to be conditioned to, right? So we have to get ready for those changes that's coming down the pipeline and you know, I think it's sooner than later, uh, where some of us are thinking, oh, we have like 10 years. No, we don't. <laughs> so just being able to adapt to those tech changes and, and be open-minded for those is going to be crucial um, to our business growth or even staying in business, period. Uh, number five is know your worth. Um, whenever you're in um, a room or space or you have opportunities, you have to know your worth. You're not getting invited to these plays because you have no value. You're getting invited to these plays because you have value. You provide something, whether it's your products, whether it's you have unique, amazing products or your services, whatever it is, whenever you're invited to a space, is because you have a worth. And we all have a worth, um, but something special about you is standing out to where someone is willing to you know, provide these opportunities for you. And so knowing your worth, you need to be able to explain that to people, not in a boastful way, not in a, you know, you can do it in a modest way. And, and I think too, I'm, I'm even iffy about using the word modest because I think we've been so conditioned, especially women, especially black women, we've been so conditioned to be modest with our success, um, modest with the way we express ourselves. And there's really nothing, there's really nothing basic about us. <laughs> uh, let's be real. Um, but knowing your worth, being in spaces is crucial because especially if you are going to be among the very few, um, and I'm speaking from the point of a woman of color, I'm almost always the minority in the room. I'm almost, you know, it's very few of us um, ever in a space. Um, and so knowing your worth is crucial. Knowing how to tell people who you are, what you do is very important um, because no one else can advocate for you but you. So definitely know your worth. Um, number six, uh, walk walk with your products or be a walk-in billboard. So as I'm here at this event, um, it was a two-day, two-day, right? Or three-day. I think it was a two-day event. I don't remember. Wait. I think it was a two-day event. Yep. <laughs> okay. Yep. It was two-day event. Um, so it was a two-day event and walking with your products 
or be a walking billboard. Again, you are your brand, right? No one is going to advocate for you. And so when I got this opportunity, no matter where I'm traveling, if I'm even going on vacation, I have a product in my back. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm known for that. Like if I'm going on the plane, there is bound to be a baby and that baby may be crying and I may have that opportunity to walk up to that mom and be like, hey, here's a yummy mitt. This is going to help the baby for the entire flight. And I've been known to be that mother. <laughs> I've been known to be that person with my brand. And what that would do is it will instantly, for me, that product, that's just 20 bucks and whatever it is. And now I would have somebody advocate for me forever. So if I say that mom for that flight, guess what? She's going to advocate for, she's going to be a customer for life forever because I saved her. No mom wants to really have her kid crying the entire flight. It's just not. It's just not a good scene, um, right? And so I always think about opportunities like this. Um, but especially with this opportunity, I thought, okay, I'm going to be making policymakers, decision makers for this country. I need to have my product. They need to visually see it. Um, my products is, you know, you could talk about it. Anybody that have kids, they'll understand right away. Oh, yummy, made a tea and mitten. Okay, a mitten worn in the hand for babies to self-soothe themselves for um, during their horrible teething stage. Oh yeah, I remember that when my baby was small, they were, you know, they were teething, they were chewing their hands and oh my gosh, I had to give them a washcloth or I have to give them a, one of those teethers. So they'll get it visually, but I like showing, I like showing off my product, right? Because you work your butt off for your product. You don't need to hide it. I'm not going to send you to a website because you ain't going to go there. So I'm going to make sure I leave an impression on you. And so I had my products in my bag um, and I have, <laughs> because I have more than one brands, I walk with all my products because you never know who may be interested in your product. And I'm never going to leave one brand out, even though I'm advocating at that point for one brand and I'm speaking about one brand, I'm always going to have my other brand um, products in my bag if I have it, because um, you never know who you'll maybe speak into. And so, you know, being that, you know, billboard for your brand is crucial. And so my, my, the person that my chaperone, he was just so impressed. He was like, wow, like, you know, I've done this how many, so many years and every year I've done it. I've never seen a person walk with their product. And I was always intrigued on why not. And here you are, you had, like, I literally had my bag filled with my products <laughs> and every room I went to I took it out I let them hold it because guess what most of those senators and all those you know everyone I spoke to they were either um, fathers or grandfathers so they needed my product right so I wanted to leave an impression where either I would give them the product or give them the, you know, show them the products that they now, now know, oh, I'm definitely going to check you out. I'm going to tell my wife about you because we just had a grandchild and, you know, we just, my wife has nothing better to do than to shop for our grandchild. So I always made sure I had my physical products so they could feel it, they could see the quality, and they could be even more impressed because I think sometimes to, of course, keep mentioning this because it's true but for us we always have to overdo everything <laughs> and so you know when you sh when you talk about a product people expect one thing versus what you show them and even though the um the feedback is always like wow you created that you created that I don't get phased by that. I'm like, yes, because we do create everything. <laughs> but you know you sometimes have to show you have to show your product. Um, and I was like, even in the room with all the sellers, I was looking around and nobody had their product. Some people were like, oh, I forgot my my business card. Um, how did you remember? Or I didn't even think to bring my product. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, you're you, you have an amazing opportunity and you did not walk with your product. Like, I, I don't get it. Um, so if don't be that person ever, um, no matter if you're, even if you're going to a networking event, bring your product. On my Pick My Brain tour, 
a lot of you guys brought me goodies. A lot of you guys brought me gifts. And I was so grateful because one, I shop majority of the times with small businesses anyway. And so now to have a physical product in my hand and meet the owner, I know that it was made with love, with care. And so if I need that product or if somebody's asking for a recommendation, you're the first person I'm going to recommend because I now know your product. Uh, a young lady, she does um, cakes in a jar. She brought me infused liquor. Uh, mind you, it had infused liquor. And she bought that on our Pick My Brain stop. And it was delicious right? So if I ever need that, guess who I'm going to? I'm going to her. Um, one of my clients, she brought me some skincare products and we're using it now. Um, on our North Carolina stop, another, another young lady brought us, um, brought me, um, some lotion for eczema and stuff like that. And it was like a nice travel size. So my entire last two months, guess what I've been traveling with? I've been traveling with that. Um, so again, like you, your product has to speak for you sometimes. It's hard to explain your product to people. And so being that walk-in billboard, whether it's you just having your products on, your t-shirt on, your brand colors, all these events that I did, I had my brand colors on, whether it was in jewelry, whatever it was in t-shirt, um, I was on brand. So people automatically they saw me in a in a purple dress or a yellow dress whatever it was they were like oh you're on brand like you're always on brand yes I'm a walk-in billboard and so you need to do that so if you haven't gotten a brand shirt or anything to that like go get it like go get it done um yeah go get it done <laughs> um oh perfect one um my friend, uh, my business friend, Audrey Richmond, she just launched a dope brand called I Get Clients. Um, so go check her out. She does dope custom apparel for small businesses so you can really brand yourself. So definitely go check her out um, if you need that done. But you need to be a walking billboard, period, point blank. <laughs> and number seven, people love your story, craft a good one. Everybody that I um, introduced myself to, I had the same consistent brand story because that's what people are going to fall in love with. If I was invited to come out on a paid trip just to tell my brand story, best believe I know that brand story to heart. And so I'm going to rehearse that. I'm going to tell that to every single person so they can fall in love again and again and again. So know your brand story and craft it in a perfect way, whether it's one sentence or two, the max. Um, that way, when you're introducing yourself to someone, they're not confused what you do. They don't, they're not confused what you sell because it's like you done told them, you just went on and on and on. And they're like, wait, what do you do again? <laughs> like if you're an author, hey, I'm an author. What niche, you know, what niche it is, what kind of books you, your, is your niche and whatever it is. But it needs to be one to two sentences craft perfectly so you can recite that to every single person in the room and they get it right away what you do and they're not confused what you do so people love your story so craft a good one i had to every every policy maker that i met with it was the same consistent brand story to the point where my chaperone he just he was loving it. he just sat back and just let me do my thing and you know it's like, oh, he was just impressed. Like, oh, I didn't know that about you. And where I needed to plug the IR, I plugged the IR. But my brand story was consistent. So take the time out to craft a good brand story um, so you're not confusing people on what the heck you do. <laughs> Number, where are we? Number eight, serve others always what is in it for them. So again, when you're meeting people, um, and if you need something from them, then you also have to make sure, like, there's a give and a take, right? You're not just taking, like, what can you offer them? So I'm like, even again, I'm there for Darlin and Co., but I know I have a podcast and I know coming up in a few months, I need some amazing guests. So at all the events that I've been to, I'm looking, I'm always looking for who has a great story that my audience would love to listen to that they can be inspired by that I would love to have on as a guest. 
And so for, for them, what's in it for them is being able to share their story with my audience. What's in it for me is I get to have an amazing guest. And so just making sure that as I'm, you know, talking to people and I'm like, you know what, you would make a great guest for my podcast. This is how many listeners we have. This is what's in it for you. I would love to have you on. Here's my card. Email us if you're interested. See, see what I did there? There's something in it for them as well as it's something in there for me. And so most of the time it's like, oh, oh, definitely. I'm looking to grow my, you know, my audience. I'll love to be on your thing. Let's follow up. And following up is key too. Um, we'll definitely touch on that. But that for the most part, everyone that I asked, it was because we had like a long conversation. I was really able to feel them out whether this would be a good person to interview. Um, and, you know, so when it came time to ask that question, it was mutual, like, oh yeah, I would definitely love to be on your podcast. Um, so stuff like that. And again, I wasn't there for DIR, but I still made those connections to make sure that I got that done because I'm not about to have, you know, I can have my um, my team go out and look for people, but I like meeting people first um, before I have them on my podcast. And so I get a lot of emails like, hey, can I be on your podcast? And I'm just like, I, I would rather meet you first to know if you, you know, to get a feel of who you are first and if my audience will gravitate to your content. Um, and if you're not, if you're just going to come on on here and just sell, 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 it's not a good fit. So definitely, um, yeah, definitely make sure it's a mutual, 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 mutual um, give and take situation, not just you're taking information and you're, you know, it's, nobody wants to feel like that. So it definitely has to be mutual as well. Number nine, maximize your opportunity. Um, again, overall, I went there for my baby brand, but by the time I left, I, I branded for both. I made sure I advocate for both brands. Um, I help people launch and grow their Amazon store. So this was a perfect opportunity for me to meet other sellers that may need that assistant. Um, so I was able to talk about that service. I was able to, you know, to see what people were having issues with so I can make sure my clients weren't having those issues. I could help my clients with those things beforehand. Um, just like, you know, talking to the policymakers there was great to even, you know, bigger problems that I've been um thinking about to really address those directly to the people who are actually making the decisions um, in the room. So definitely maximizing my opportunity. I, I was also able to meet with um, a lot of the caucuses there. So they had the uh, Hispanic caucus, the, Black, uh, the African-American caucus. There was just a few of them there, but I particularly wanted to meet with the Black caucus because I just launched um, a few months back, we launched a affirmation flashcard for for children um, to combat suicide among kids, and so we have like three uh, three plus different version of the card. Um, one is specifically targeted to African American kids. Well, it's not specific. Let me take that back. It's not specifically targeted to African American kids, but it has brown kids in it, so it might be perceived that way. Um, but for representation wise, we had one designed with brown children. And so the Black Caucus, they just came out with an initiative to combat suicide among young children. And so I wanted to meet with them about our card and how we can both partner um, to really help that and push that initiative forward. And so again, I'm in the room with a decision maker on the board of that and you know, they're there at the table and they're like, hey, so anybody have any questions for us? No one had any question, but I did. <laughs> so I'm like, uh, yes, I do. Uh, so I just came out with this card and this is what I'm trying to do. And how can we partner together? Oh, sure. Can we talk after? Right after talk, gave me his assistant number. His assistant literally called me an hour later and she's like, okay, I want you to meet with Congresswoman such and such to talk about your cards and we love what you're doing. We're super impressed. How can we help? See how that happened? See how that happened? <laughs> so maximize your opportunity. Um, 
no one is going to advocate for you. No one is going to speak up for you. You need to maximize your opportunity. Stop going to these. Um, and even though this was not so much a networking event, but if you're if you have an opportunity, whether it's you being invited to um, go on, you know, national television or whatever it is, if you get a speaking opportunity, whatever it is, maximize your opportunity. You know, as long as it's not disrespecting anyone, maximize your opportunity. And lastly, number 10, make sure you follow up. Make sure you follow up. And just going back to maximizing your opportunity, while I was there, I had like a few retailers, um, small boutiques that we're in in Washington, Washington, D.C. And so I made sure I went, I visited them, I supported them. And I was able to pitch a bookstore that I wanted my cards in for both the Pick My Brain cards and for my other, um, you know, baby brand. So I, again, I had my physical products on me because I am a billboard, right? So I had my physical products on me. So it's easier for me to go inside the store and pitch, not like in a, a horrible way, but I knew by research that one this would be a great um, opportunity for both of us because my products align with what they were doing. And so I did my research before. I knew their audience that came into stores. So I knew my products would fit perfectly. The product design, the packaging, all those things would fit perfectly for their bookstore. And so when I went, of course, initially his thought was like, okay, here am I, I'm about to get pitched. But the way I did it, it was like, even after talking to him, I'm like, you know, how is, I always ask for feedback. Like, how is my approach and how, you know, would you, whatever it is, I always ask for feedback. And he was like, no, I honestly thought you were going to be like another pitch. But when I saw your product, your product spoke for itself, is exactly it aligns with everything that we're doing. I love it. And I made sure he was committed to ordering on the spot. <laughs> so, you know, even those little details, like somebody could say, I love your product, but okay, so when should I expect um, your email? Would you like me to email you? I can email you right now, whatever it is. And to the point where we had such a great conversation that he referred me to other bookstores and said, these are my other bookstore friends. They would love your product. Just let them know I referred you. And that does make a difference because then when I started to reach out to them, see, I'm giving y'all so much tip, <laughs> but when I reached out to them, it was easier to kind of name drop because now, but don't name drop if you weren't given permission um, to kind of name drop because now they know like if you, if I recommended you, then your product must, must be good enough for my bookstore because you want it too, Right. And so I was able to do that and secure more bookstore because of the conversation we had and the approach that I took. You know, I, I've been researching your store. I, I'll be, you know, I think it would be a great fit for both of us. Your audience would love it. So those type of things, make sure you're researching first. You know that your stuff actually fit in somebody's store um, and their branding and their message and all those things to the point where he was, you know, he was giving us ideas. Oh, I would love if you made this because I just love your everything that you, you know, your branding, it would go great. And I just don't have the time. So just things like that. So maximizing your opportunity. So I got a, I got a free trip to go to Amazon. And on that trip, I was able to get opportunity with the Black Caucus. I was able to get opportunity with Amazon. I was able to secure um, retail space for my products and restock my products in other, um, in the same, in places that it was already at because, you know, it was selling already good. We had literally just sold out. We got an email that we were sold out of that bookstore. And that's what prompted me to go and go into the store and look what they were offering to kind of suggest other products and also shop with them to shop other amazing dope brands. Um, so, and, you know, so definitely check them out if you, um, so the one that I'm mentioning, um, so Nubian Heritage is one, um, they sell mostly black owned products and I believe they literally just opened another, um, and I'm going to make sure I'm getting that name right, but they just opened another, um, facility, I think in Baltimore 
And so they're in Washington, D.C., and they just opened another storefront in Baltimore. Not Nubian Heritage. I was wrong. Nubian Heritage. Sorry. So they're in Washington, D.C., and also right next to them is Mahogany Bookstore. So that's the two stores that I'm talking about, two amazing Black-owned stores. So definitely go check them out um, if you're in the Washington, D.C. area and tell them I sent you. Um, but definitely check them out. They're doing amazing things uh, for Black-owned businesses. If you're going to pitch them, don't don't be horrible. <laughs> um, don't be horrible. Um, do your research first, for sure, because um, these are amazing stores doing amazing things. So definitely that's about maximizing your opportunity. And last but not least, um, follow up. There is coins in following up. There is coins in following up. No one owes you anything. People are busy. If you met somebody, even if they love you to death, they, they're just busy and they will not follow up. Most of the times, like I, I look at what I do myself, and if you can um, say that you probably do this too, is I may go to an event and I may have like 20 to 30 business cards after, and just going through them sometimes is stressful <laughs> or draining. And if it's not, you know, if it's not like super important, I probably just leave them there for months. So, what I started to do is be intentional when I collect cards and I'll write a note on the back of their card in front of them. Um, you don't have to do it in front of them, but it's just me. So I'll write a note like, okay, if I met somebody in there for my podcast, I'll put a note on the back, like follow up for a podcast. Um, if it's for retail, follow up for retail. If it's because they have a connection for me and they told me that in person, follow up to remind about the connection they have for me whatever it is, I wrote the note on the back. So that way it was easier for me to retrieve their card and know exactly why I'm emailing them versus it just being an email like, oh, thanks for connecting. And that's it. Um, being in intentional about your follow-ups is crucial too, because people are busy. Um, I would say follow-up after your initial follow-up, maybe two to three times after that, you can follow up because again, um, if they're fresh off the event, they're busy. They're still swamped with emails. Um, and maybe another week after, they may see it and then like, oh, I'm going to get back to her. I forgot to answer to the initial one. Three, um, they might still be busy. <laughs> and then four is probably the last time. And I will just even make that known in the email like, hey, this is uh, my third attempt to follow up with you. I know you're extremely busy, um, but here is whatever your request was. And hopefully I'll hear from you now. If not, I understand. And that's it. They, they don't owe you anything. If they decide on the third one, like, oh my gosh, I'm so, so sorry. I saw your other emails, whatever it is. Um, most of the times, if they don't respond to the others um, and the third one or the fourth one they do respond to, um, that's fine. If they don't respond, then they're just not interested. And it's fine. It's totally fine. A great tip that... Um, Christine Saintville, who is on our Baltimore staff. So shout out to Christine from Moms in Charge. Um, forgot to shout her out last episode. But Christine Saintville gave us a great tip on our Pick My Brain tour. She said that you can turn on your LinkedIn has a location finder or something to that sort. Maybe wrong. I'll put it in the group. <laughs> but uh, or I'll send it out on our app. Um, but you can put that on. And if you're in the room, it can literally find uh, the people in the room that's on LinkedIn and you could start requesting their friend, um, requesting to add them there. Um, so that's a great like business networking tip that we learned on our Pay My Brain tour, but she wasn't there. <laughs> Let me stop. Um, but yeah, that's a great tip um, to do. So that way you can follow them on a professional website uh, platform rather, such as LinkedIn, where it's more business orientated. If you want to message them there, you can um, to just say, hey, we met today. Um, just wanted to follow up. Some people are, some people answer their LinkedIn messages more than they will their email. I, you gotta, you gotta figure out which one you want to do. Um, I, I don't really, I prefer emails than LinkedIn, honestly, but everyone is different. So you just have to reach people where they're more active, I guess. If they tweet a lot, 
go to Twitter. They, they're on their Instagram more, go to Instagram. Um, but definitely check, you know, try that out, but definitely don't get discouraged in your follow-up thinking, oh my gosh, like this was horrible. Um, you know, they're not answering me. They told me they would. Like people are just, people are just really busy. Um, to be honest. And it's your job to follow up without having feelings. I learned in business, um, especially us as women, to not have feeling, don't hold grudges. Um, just following up. Just follow up. Like, I can't tell you how many times I'll get a reminder on my email of something I haven't opened or I've, I've opened and I've not responded. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry I didn't respond. I've been busy, but I'm going to give me a few days to come back to you that's just me. Some people won't ever do that. <laughs> but if that person had followed up with me after a couple of days, I'd have been more reluctant to answer them because I would have gotten that reminder. Um, you know, so definitely think about that. Don't get in your feelings if somebody doesn't follow up. It's, you know, it's an opportunity. It's, it's up to you. Um, no one owes us anything. So definitely follow up because there is coins in following up. So that's it for my little Amazon trip, which was amazing. Um, I learned a lot. I was able to connect with some dope people. I, you know, their their brand is definitely one to to follow, see how they're moving, um, whether you like what they're doing or not. Um, a lot of people say they're the demise of a lot of small businesses and um, stores closing and all these things. But if I feel for me, if you can't beat them, you join them, right? And if you want to, we're all in survival mode. And so to just follow the trend and look at corporations like this, major companies like this, how they're operating and how you can implement implement some of the things they're doing in your small business um, is cru- crucial for our growth. And so just looking at those things and, you know, following through and pivoting and innovating your brand. So your brand doesn't die um, is super crucial to our growth. So until next time on my next episode, where I'll share with you guys, my eBay trip. Yes. eBay invited me out to um, their conference in Vegas the following week so exciting times, right? My summer has just been bomb, but they invited me out the following week and I had an amazing time. And I want to tell you all about them and their business culture, which I was super impressed with. So until next time, dream big, execute hard. Bye. Dreams inspire.